Hello and welcome back to That Old Shop. My name is Mike Scott and this is video two or part two on the Browning Sharp Bench Center. Been working on getting that cleaned up, buzzing all the paint off it and getting it ready for a little refurbished job, a little clean up and paint situation. So I'll bring you along. Most of the parts are outside, so I'll take you outside and show you what we got accomplished in part one. So this is where we left off yesterday, or part one of the Brown and Sharp bench center getting it cleaned up. This is the base. I'll show you a close up of what we got accomplished. Buzzed a lot of the paint off, a lot of filler. Just a lot of filler. Some of it smooth, some of it I gotta take down yet. That's the big flat lettering on the one side. There's the shop tag. Still have to see if I can get that off or not. I was able to get the other tag off that had the flat headed drive screws. I'll show you what that looks like on the other side and how I was able to accomplish that. Okay, here's the other side. I already got this plate off. There's the flat headed drive screws. So I was able to get in through the through the bottom here. They had through holes drilled from when they installed the screws, so I was able to pound them out. Holding a hardened finish nail in a vice grip tapping on with the side of my hammer tap 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 and that cavity there was able to pop it off so I tried heating it up to try to crystallize the crud that was down in the holes that may have helped may not have I don't know but that's what it does to the paint so now I'm going to be able to take the torch to this whole area here and take these three-sided scrapers and scrape that paint all off with doing minimal damage to the uh, to the plate to the writing so that's what we're going to do next all right we'll get this heated up with the torch break down that paint some more See how the paint's all cracked now. It's a little gummy feeling, but it's coming right off without putting any scratches on the uh, plate around the lettering. It's actually working out better than I thought it would. There's an O. 
Give me an O. Give me an R. putting any pressure on it. It's just like taking dried food off of here. This is nice. Working out. scratches on there but it's going to get painted a little biggie using the very tip when I was going like that I was scratching it take it into the bench grinder it's got a brass brush brass wire, brass excuse me brass wire wheel on it should probably get the rest of this out in between the letters. And I'll do what I can here. Since I got it in the vise, got it hot. Yeah, the B and the R and those holes in there, that's definitely going to have to be picked out. These letters are looking pretty good, actually. I'll take some heat to it again, maybe it'll we'll just burn out of there. heat really didn't make it crinkle up. I mean it's softer, it feels easier to pick. I thought it was just gonna kind of dry up and almost blow away. Wishful thinking there. Take some back and forth and maybe another round of heat. company. Looks like it got hit with something. 
I have to file that row down a little more to bring back that dinged area on the O. To make it wide enough, this E in the end of sharp is no particular hit. Or if it's just from the casting. When it was cast. This feels pretty light. I don't think it's uh, an iron material. I think it's actually aluminum. Doesn't look like aluminum here. And you know what? When I was filing it, yeah, it wasn't aluminum when I was filing it. So, yeah, this is a cast piece. Cast iron or cast steel iron product not aluminum or brass or bronze or something like that okay that took me Okay, getting to work on this a little more. Okay, this excess fillers give me a little trouble, but it's coming off. After uh, getting some more pipes there, I had to extend it out here. I had to get a coupler and a close nipple. 
My wife was out shopping, so I had her pick it up, and psh, the guy in the store was absolutely no help. So, Menards, train your people, will you? Jeez. I had to have my wife walk away so the guy would leave and then uh, send her back over there and walked her through what I needed. The guy didn't know what black pipe was. I heard him trying to look it up in the computer. Train him. Train those young guys. So what I gotta do here is I gotta wire it up yet. This is the wire to the motor. This is the line wire. So I gotta cut this BX back some. Give me some more wire. This is a BX cutter. Just made for cutting this material. Turn it so you don't feel cutting anymore. And twist it off of there. This might be kind of hard to do when I already got ends on there. Mm, those ends aren't going to work for that anyway. Different pressure switch, different connections. There. Called a red man or redhead gets put in there so that where you cut the BX right gets clamped down by the clamp. It doesn't squeeze the sheathing and press the sharp edge into the wire. That would cause a short. It did that so that's a little protection some guys have wrapped electrical tape around the wiring pull the wires out a little bit wrap wire uh, electrical tape around there and shove it in there either way just a little protection there to prevent a short Beautiness. All wired up. See if the cover fits. Cover fits, wires are out of the way. Contact time. It's an old 1953 Curtis air compressor. Maybe gear on tank, two stage compressor head. Nice quiet 1750 RPM motor on there. It hasn't run in a while, that's why it's got a little clack here. It had a 
splashing oil up in there. It just has a splasher system down in the crankcase. This thing's done a sweet machine for me. It's just in a very tight spot. They try to do any uh, work in this pressure strip, which I've had to do lately. Those are those bad ones. Hopefully this square D uh, holds up better than the other one. Okay, so let's get back to that browning sharp. Okay, we're going to try a little heat on this side to clean up the paint around this lettering. See if it'll help me lift that shop tag off of there. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Twelve twenty-four on the shop tag. I think I said two twenty-four the first day. Let's go back to the scraper. see that where the E goes in here some round holes you know what I think this is a separate plate too those must be drive drive pins or drive screws there oh so yeah I'll be able to pop this off and give it some more attention Always find something when you're cleaning cleaning the machine up. Some of it's expected, some of it's not. That A took a hit right there. Tops of these three letters. And I touched them up with some some weld. 
bring those back. Man, I thought this was all cast in with the base. This is a separate piece as well. And probably getting some scratches going in there. Nope. Thought it was. It's still kind of gummy. It's not quite as brittle and dry as on that other plate. Probably because I had that plate off. Wasn't attached to the base. And the base wasn't sucking heat out of it. I bet you there's two drive pins in here. Maybe. Would make sense. It's kind of a long, long deal. You might need a couple in the middle. Sorry about the shaking bench. Had to readjust outside here. The sun was heating up my camera. I shut it down and move it into some shade. No, I did some pinch, it's not as stable. I'll get this cleaned up a little bit. Scraped off and brushed off. Then I'll try and knock those drive screws out. And I'll keep saying drive screw, drive pin. You drive them in. Got kind of a twist to them. That's where it gets the screw name, I suppose. Not really a thread, but it's like a twist, like a rifling in a barrel of a gun. Yeah, there's a couple of screws in there. Pin screws, screw pin. Looks like there's two, four, six screws or pins holding it on. Okay, time for the rep tap tap to get these drive screws out of here. Get this other name plate off of here. See a couple holes here. There's one. 
have more drive screws up there in the pan headed type. Oh, those two don't go all the way through. These two don't go all the way through. Well, that's a bummer. That's going to be fun getting that off. But when there's a wheel, there's a way, right? center one out. In case you've never seen these before, they just have little ridges in them for driving them in a hole, tight hole, wedges them in there. See how this works. Oh yeah, look at that. Gotta kind of tap it in the groove. No slot. Oh yeah. And that's that. Yeah. That's pretty uh, scraped up. Not for me, wire brushing. That's just from things banging up against it through the years. So now these drive screws right here at the end of the plate line up with the ribs in the casting. See this rib here? So it's not a blind hole. Um, excuse me, it is a blind hole, not a through hole. So I can't get something to pop the pins out from the inside of the base. I'm going to try to heat method around here. Hit this with a piece of brass and a hammer, see if I can jar them loose and pry that up. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to leave it and clean it and paint around it. The problem with using the heat method is that rib is right there, it's going to suck a lot of the heat away. But we'll give it a try. Moving on. No, those holes are slightly off center of the ribs. Well, they do go all the way through. 
we'll just peel down this and crush it. You can't see it way down on the bottom of those cavities. Because these are farther down. Closer to this surface. Under the sea and the bottom here. you guys what I'm talking about with that alignment here. The holes or the pins are right there. So because of the there's a big radius on this rib and it didn't appear that the holes went all the way through. I'm kind of feeling something there though. Same thing with this one. There's the pins. There's the rib. Oh, oh, yep. Still has a couple of holes. Must be some crud down in there. All right, hallelujah. Okay, I'm in the shop. I got this plate. I'm going to try to clean up with this brass wheel on my, uh, one of my bench grinders. <laughs> Soft this is, I can put my finger on there. It's a really soft grass wire wheel. Well, there it is. Got around the letters, got in between the letters a little better. And just to show you, there's a the magnet, so yeah, it's not aluminum. It's an iron product. It's got, actually got a part number on the back. Can't quite make it all out. 614 is the last three. Like maybe 149614. But there's a part number after you for this. It goes on those bases.
Now I'll try to bring back some of these letters that are just faded away. They're not cast up as high as the others, or they took a hit at one time in its life. I'll try and bring them back by doing some draw filing. And it's called draw filing because you draw the file towards you. Getting most of them. The bottom of a B here, it's not coming back. I'm not concerned about taking the metal off. It's just lettering. And then you should always flip your piece around when you draw a filing so you take the material off evenly. Let's see, where's that V? Huh? That V is mostly back there in the bottom of it. Then there's a B, B in brown. You can angle file in here. left-handed filing. V is mostly back. Let me brush that off. Oh yeah, looking good. A little bit on that B. A little bit on that B. Over the whole thing, even. Give it a few more draws. to paint. The B just got a little bit on the corner, and the V a little bit on the bottom edge, and the O in the company, I'll show you. You see that? The O in company right in the middle there. Get a pointer. Top of that O is just a little faded away. Looks like something hit it. The rest look much better. Still raised lettering, so it's still going to be out there. The base color will be around here, probably green. Black lettering. So I noticed after I shut the camera off, there's this and sign in between brown and sharp. The and sign, the uh, upper hole is almost gone. So I'm going to take this carbide burr and this Dremel, try and deepen that. Wish me luck.
I think that'll be deep enough for paint. Wish that O was better, but oh well. Well, there she be.